Uh, hi guys, uh, welcome to the channel. Uh, I haven't seen you guys in a while. Uh, I just want to come back with you guys with the deck profile. Uh, it's a Shenron deck, so if you guys are tired of seeing a Shenron deck, uh, this is another one. <laughs> uh, Shenron is one of those customizable leaders that you can just play uh, almost any um, battle card that you deem to be very effective in the format, and uh, you can just reanimate them using uh, World Peace. Um, in testing, I found that Shenron does have an 80% win rate against most of the uh, the match, or the 80% win rate against most of the, the matchups. Uh, so, uh, one of the, the types of decks that I was underprepared for uh, in this um, in this particular event was aggress aggro decks. Uh, so, uh, I do regret not having enough uh, anti aggro. Uh, cards that I can use against my my opponents, but um, yeah, but that was one of my only losses. Oh well, I also lost to Janema as well. So uh, at the end of the event, I did go uh, four two. It was only six rounds. Had there been another round, there was a good chance that I would have uh, top thirty two. Um, if you guys look at the roster, uh, the roster was a lot of people had twelve points, and uh, it just so happens my twelve point was one of the lowest ones, to where I uh, actually didn't secure the top thirty two spot. So. Uh, at the end of six rounds, there was only one undefeated, and that undefeated was Kidku in Swiss. So congratulations, to Kidku! I did predict that uh, that there was going to be a Kidku that was going to sneak in with uh, with all the um, Janemba and the Shenron that was going to be around. So yeah, so let's go into the deck profile in the next one. Okay, guys. So here's the deck. Uh, instead of the Victory Strike um, or the Awakened Power, I did decide to play uh, Goku and Oob. Uh, Goku and Oob, I think it's better in the mirror match. Um, uh, just because like uh, he does uh, reset energies uh, when he does attack and he also uh, spins away um, one of the low life so uh, it's a really uh, good card I think uh, one of the better secret rares uh, in my opinion to, to sneak a win so uh, in fact actually the Rockford Illinois list uh, the first place uh, didn't play the victory strike uh, but it was a Paranga uh, leader and it played uh, Goku and Oob instead uh, and I definitely agree with that. I think Goku Noob's just better for the um, anti-ramp strategy just because he spins away energy. Uh, plus, I, I like the art on this card too because, you know, um, they're the best friends and they're, you know, tackling on meta. So, this is a reanimate deck, so of course you're going to play the Kaioken. Um, Kaioken is just one of the key cards in many matchups just because you can look at uh, your opponent's hand and look at a card that you don't like and then place it in the drop area. So, um, yeah, against Janemba, this is a very key card just because uh, right after you go G to 7 them, you reanimate this card with a world piece, look at their hand and take out the remaining cards that uh, is a threat to you, and then you just clean up, uh, clean up the mess with uh, giving this uh, triple strike, tr uh, dual attack, and uh, with, if you have a Sh Shenron figure of Majesty, uh, you can give this critical. So it, it cleans up the game real quick against Janemba. Um, I only played two of this. Uh, I don't think I needed more than two uh, just because... Um, it is a card that I can just reoccur from the drop area, and if I needed more than that, I mean, I, I'll never need more than two, and then most matchups nowadays, especially uh, now, uh, you, you don't really need this card very much um, anymore just because uh, you're playing against either an aggro deck, uh, a mill deck, which you don't want to draw using him, and uh, the only time you ever really need this is against probably Toa. Um, so, um, yeah, probably Toa or a rogue deck. So. Uh, you probably just don't need this guy for most cases. Even in the mirror match, uh, a lot of things do have barrier, so you're never going to really need this card. Maybe if you want to clean up uh, Kaioken that didn't finish the job, uh, you'll use this guy. Or maybe use this for Figures of Majesty to clean up uh, you know, those, those four cost battle cards. So um, it's not very necessary anymore, and I don't think you know, you're going to need it as much. Uh, but it's there just in case. Uh, I only play two uh, Gojira Hero Revived. Uh, it's a great card just because you know you want to reset the, your opponent's hand to to three, and I think the first person in the mirror match to resolve Gogeta seven uh, usually is the winner of that, that game. So um, yeah, this this deck does deviate from playing the Goku uh, to help them Union Fusion into this guy, um, but maybe in the future um, Shenjita will come back. This is no longer called Shenjita anymore. This is just called uh, Shenron Reanimate. Um, yeah, at least that's what I call it. So. The Shenjita deck usually runs uh, Sun Goku to uh, help you Union Fusion earlier, so maybe the Shenjita matchups were, or yeah, the Shenjita deck would be better uh, if I were to play. Um, so like, if I were to play Shenjita and then I was playing against this deck, uh, I think Shenjita would probably win more 
of that matchup just because, uh, like I said before, the first one to Union Fusion first, or the, the first one to bring out Gogeta 7 first, is usually going to win that matchup. Um, yeah, but that's just my opinion. Uh, I also play, so you don't need this card as much anymore, but there were some games where I did steal uh, many games just because uh, they left my Figures of Majesty up, or they, f they left him up, and I played Figure of Majesty, gave him crit, and then, you know, just a typical old combo, you know, so you just don't want to deviate from that. Um, and I'm using him less for Union Vision, and I'm more using him for uh, charging him, so that's the main reason why I decided to play uh, only three instead of four. So I'm using him less for Union Vision. This is a ram deck, so you are playing Whis, uh, the resting attendants. Uh, I did regret not playing a third copy, but I never needed the third copy, I guess, because uh, my my main matchups I really wanted to ramp fast enough was against uh, Janemba, uh, where they were going to mill me, and I had no problem having this into the drop area for some reason. They always seemed to mill my uh, Whis resting attendant, so it was never really an issue for me to... Uh, to not have it in my drop when I needed it. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, in other cases, I guess the mirror match. Uh, but in the mirror match, I guess I always saw this too because I am playing Super Bowl in this deck. So uh, I am playing 25 extra cards. I counted; it was pretty amazing. Uh, that's kind of a lot of cards to have in your um, in your Shenron deck. A lot of extra cards. Uh, one spicy thing I did try to do was play uh, Ever Depending Bulma. Uh, it was really a toss up. Um, like I said before, I was underprepared for aggress aggro decks just because I had the comfort of playing uh, Ever Dependable Bulma first. Uh, I was afraid that if I didn't open enough Dragon Balls in my opening hands or just search for them to get to five for the sparking, um, I felt that this was stronger uh, in, the, in the event that um, that if I play against U6 uh, Kaba, that they would aggro me on their turn two and I wouldn't have um, five. Um, I wouldn't have five cards in my drop area um, to out combo them. So that was what I was afraid of mainly because, um, a little short story, I did take this deck uh, to a locals in uh, Texas and uh, I did lose to you. Uh, I did lose to the U6 package just because they, they just aggro me so quickly that um, yeah, turn 2 was a very scary turn for me. So I, I, I took out the Temporal Time Strunk and I decided to play uh, Ever Dependable Bulma instead just because if I'm at 5 life I can use this. So uh, it helped out. I mean it was it was mostly negligible in other matchups. So even if I wasn't playing against a U6 deck, uh, this you know, still came up a lot. So. Um, Scientist Fu, I think, now exited most of the uh, Shenron ramp decks just because uh, they just simply do not need them anymore just because there's so many strong boss monsters they can bring out that they're never really going to play uh, Scientist Fu. So, uh, I'm um, not Fu, but Scientist Fu, but Fu Strider and Mystery. I know there's so many Fu's now. <laughs> uh, so, just because of that, the, the, the her being a 5 or a 0, uh, a zero combo cost that needs to activate in order to res to get the 10k doesn't really matter as much so um yeah it was a cool it was good decent um later in the game i i mean later in the tournament i i kind of did wish it was temporal but not that much so it didn't really matter too much uh i played two uh paranga paranga is really useful um so i i found this out uh, if you're playing against janemba you have a large board to survive against them longer what you can do is uh Let's say you have a large board, you can just recycle all your board back to your deck so that um, you have a larger deck size uh, and that prevents you from losing um, the the grind game against Janemba. So, yeah. Um, I did play uh, Dende, um, new to the job. I think I made a mistake. I, this should have been uh, an anti-aggro deck or an anti-aggro card. So this maybe should have been a Crisis Crusher instead of a uh, Dende new to the job. So um, I had to actually scramble in the middle of the, uh, the tournament to find these, but I found that this was not really good against most matchups. In, in fact, I, I'd rather have this be, uh, yeah, like I said, Crash Crusher. And uh, the only reason why I played this was because it's recyclable off of Power Burst. So I did play the Power Burst instead of the Whis Coercion in this uh, particular deck. The, the Fu Shrine of Mystery. Uh, never needed it. I think it's it should exit the main deck now. Uh, just because before they didn't, we didn't have Kaioken, now we do. So there's really no need to play uh, Fu Shroud and Mystery. Uh, although I did steal a game with this, uh, I think it's just a win more card, like many others have said before me. Uh, one thing I do play that's unique in this deck, another one is uh, I play the Sun Goku making an entrance. Um, 
So in this deck, you need cards that can attack, uh, so you can combo out your uh, your big boss monsters to the drop area. And this is what I use to um, attack with. I usually attack with him, and then I pay one energy to combo away like a Gogeta Seven, or even like a Kaioken, or even the Goku Nu. So um, he was my attacker that I needed to to dump. So he, it was really good because um, it also serves as a negate, uh, and it's also a power burst target. So um, if I'm playing against cards or uh, the mirror match, I imagine if they go G to seven me, and I, and I draw, were to draw into a power burst, and he's in my drop area in my warp or my warp, very rarely will be in my warp or in my drop area. Uh, power burst serves as two negates on its own. So I just take one life, and then I just negate, um, paying one energy using him. So. Uh, so there's a lot of fun function and it actually helped a lot uh, even against anti-aggro strategies And then uh, I only played two uh, figures of majesty. Uh, I don't think I need more than that uh, Plus especially in the Janemba heavy format. You don't want more than that um, unless you want to uh, Yeah, mill yourself dry uh, My extra cards I did play the super ball uh, the super ball and the uh, one star ball you need the the one star ball so that you could drop the Super Bowl, uh, if in case you're playing against Janemba or you're playing against um, Agrodex, and that serves as you know, um, yeah, that serves as um, not using the Super Bowl against Janemba so you don't mill out, and that does that serves as not paying two energy, uh, tapping yourself out and then dying to aggro. So uh, you can make the argument that you should just play more uh, of the regular Dragon Balls, the zero cost Dragon Balls, but I needed something to dump my uh, my big. Uh, boss monsters to the drop area, so you do need to, you do need to have these two in your in your main deck to play it. Um, plus, against Janemba, most of the time when they go first, they just charge a multicolor energy, and when you have this, uh, you you just you discard their the component that they need out of their hand uh, in the opening uh, mulligan hand because most of the time when uh, people mulligan, they mulligan cards that they need in the early stages of the game and if you're resolving this uh, against them early they're more you're more likely going to hit a card that they need for setup uh, rather than later in the game when you do resolve this they're just going to pitch a card that they just don't need uh, and they're more likely to have a card that they don't need against the matchup uh, later on in the game so better to resolve this earlier than uh, than later so uh, when you do play this the Janema matchup always search for this and the Super Bowl uh, when you're playing against Janema and I just play five of the regular Paranga Ball. Uh, I funny story is I wanted to play in Team Wars, uh, which was the Sunday tournament. Uh, however, all the people that went from the uh, area that I'm from uh, left after that day one tournament. So uh, they didn't want to play the day two. So I was hoping that someone would want to play uh, a sh uh, another Shenron leader and with the regular Dragon Balls, which is why I, I chose to do the Paranga Ball <laughs> instead of the because uh, I didn't want to bring both, so I just brought this. I, I could only bring in a finite amount of stuff. Uh, two Dragon Radar. Uh, I think this is really necessary against Janemba in case, uh, in case they mill out all your World Peace. Um, you you want to be able to fetch back the World Peace and reanimate as many times as possible. So this is definitely a must against uh, the Janemba heavy format. Uh, so yeah, you're going to need Dragon Radar. For World Peace, you just... I mean, it's World Peace. World Peace is actually uh, really good in this. Uh, I mean, it's really, really good in this uh, deck just because you can just get to seven and eight so quickly uh, that throw, play, playing them out using your, your leader ability on the, the backside and paying uh, four to play a big seven drop or an eight drop is just completely devastating. So I definitely uh, think that this is one of the cards that they should consider um, putting in the ban list just because of its utility. Uh, or just ban the leader. But if you ban this leader, you have Paranga. So uh, we're going to have to just address the, the whole uh, being able to reanimate big threats um, in this in this game. Uh, for objection, I do have uh, one of every different kind of rarity. So uh, it's pretty cool. Uh, objection is uh, a must. Uh, you just cannot play less than four, uh, in my opinion. Just because um, in a single turn, you can go from like uh, six energy to eight on a single turn, resolving a Whis resting attendant and then uh, playing an objection. So you go from um, 5 to 7, or even go 5 to 8. So if you just keep all your objections in your hand, uh, you just keep ramping, and then uh, I, I guess the, the winner is the one that plays their big monster, big monster monsters first, and objection helps you get there quicker. Sensu Bean. Uh, Sensu Bean is really good, just so you can uh, untap energy, so you can play your world piece. Um, 
and of course to, to help you survive against certain matchups that are uh, aggressive. Uh, and then Power Burst. So I didn't play Whisk Coercion. I really do love Whisk Coercion. I think it's one of my favorite cards in the game. Um, just because you can untap the energy that you use and then play another Whisk Coercion. But uh, this, in this tournament, I decided to play Power Burst just because I was playing the Dende and the uh, the uh, Goku, Sun Goku uh, making an entrance. Um, but I, I made a mistake. I, I shouldn't have had this in my main deck. This should have been in my side deck. Uh, in the main deck, or uh, this card came up really you know really clutch against the uh mirror match uh, i did resolve this like four times against the mirror match and that helped me win uh so uh, really good card and it, the fact that i can recycle it makes me uh, want to play it more um and i can also revive it with uh dende uh with figures of majesty so also another reason to play this but uh like i said before this should have been a crash crusher yeah that was my medic uh, my side deck was, you know, really negligible. Um, I threw it again really last minute, the side deck, just because, you know, uh, I, I didn't really feel that this deck had much need to side deck. Uh, but I did play uh, Vegeta making an entrance, uh, mostly against the the new guy Janemba. It's uh, it's really good. Maybe I should bump it up to three in the future. But I mean, the format's changing, so it really doesn't matter anymore. Uh, I didn't find a King Yama, so I, <laughs> I, I slotted this one instead, which means I can revive it off. Uh, that, which means I can only play it from reviving it off of Figures of Majesty. This should have been a King Yama, but um, plus I don't have a foil King Yama, so I have this instead. Uh, I have uh, two Dimensional Leaper to uh, Toa. Uh, originally, I wanted to play this just for um, the mirror match, but I mean it's not really important. I mean it's not that good against the mirror match just because they can look at my hand with Kaioken and this. Uh, discard it, or even if I I play it right, um, Kyle can can't be KO'd by any skill, so it'll just attack me again, and it's not that good. So uh, maybe in the future I'll just take this out. I uh, in case I I messed up uh, instead of playing the two Shenron, I, I slotted another one just so I can revive any of these that I might need. Uh, anti aggro strategy, I played uh, Supreme Kai Time. Uh, so against Pan, uh, which was one of my losses in the tournament, uh, Pan can play Familiar Bonds to bring out uh, Digging Deep. Um, yeah, Digging Deep uh, Vegeta. And there's no card in the game that stops um, three drops from attacking, like a continuous permanent skill. So um, this is that is kind of an issue for this deck, and unfortunately, after he beat me, uh, he TO'd me. Uh, he didn't do so well in the tournament, the rest of the tournament. So I guess, um, it, I guess in his mind, it was correct to play aggro, but at the same time, um, it was just really good against Gen it was just really good against Shenron, uh, and it wasn't really. So I I just had the un the unfortunate luck to play against uh, an aggro strategy that just didn't do well in the rest of the tournament. So uh, yeah, I was hoping that wouldn't happen, but it did. So yeah, familiar bonds is pretty good. So I mean, uh, he, you know, it's it brings out digging deep Vegeta. With Pan, it, it's it's a t it's a 25k that's swinging every turn or swinging in on the first time it brings it in. But whatever, I digress. Uh, I also played uh, two Dark Power Mass Saiyan just for the U6 matchup. Uh, I don't think there's another reason why I, I play this other than that. It's also a one drop uh, black card so I can get it back from same reason uh, with power burst so I can just anti whatever the, the case is. Uh, I also cited this against the U6 but I never played against the U6 deck so um, yeah so anyways. Uh, against Toa I, I, I thought it would be a cute idea to play uh, Saiyan Kaba. Uh, the reason why is because every time if I were to give this guy triple uh, triple attack and say that Toa wastes uh, its ability to take out the double strike. It restands, and if I were to do it again, it gains the double strike again. So uh, that's the cool part about Kaba is that every time he attacks, he does get the double strike again. So, uh, but I never stole a game against Toa uh, using him. In fact, uh, I already have a decent Toa matchup, uh, and the reason being is because um, the uh, the Goku and Oob. Where is he at? The Goku and Oob actually spins away energy, so. Um, where is it at? Jesus. Here it is. So uh, this card is really um, basically the once I bring it out, I win against Toa. Uh, the reason being is that I spin their energy back so far that if they get if they have to charge to get to three, they can't play their 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 Toa chain or their <laughs> not the Toa chain their mirror chain to kill me. So I ramp so fast in this game that if I were to bring him out and I delete all their energy back to like 
um, two energy and they have to charge to get to three. They'll never resolve the mirror. And on top of that, uh, if I'm trying to kill them, they they can they can shut off the the double strike. However, uh, if I have him and another uh, boss monster, I pretty much clear the game. So uh, all my total matchups are really free just because of this guy. So yeah, that's my deck profile for Shenron. Uh, my matchups round one, I played against Janemba. Uh, there, for for this particular event, uh, I definitely should have um, I definitely should have called my my opponent out for uh, for a lot of things. Um, for game one against my Janemba player, he forgot to untap energy using Sensu Bean. Uh, on my turn, and I was under the impression that uh, my my plays were safe, so I I world pieced out uh, Goku and Oop from my my drop area, and what he did was he he said oh I forgot to untap energy with my Sensu Bean, so he did it and then he played Chomp of the Trickster and put it in rest mode. Now here I felt a little cheated, uh, but I just accepted the game state as is uh, that he basically untapped energy using a sense of being or after the fact that I already played this um, and it had I just called the judge uh, I, it would have been disputed and then I would have been able to uh, clean the game game one against him but I was I was being such a nice guy that um, I let him untap the energy that he forgot to untap with Sensu Bean, and then he resolved Chomp at the Trickster, and then that's the reason why I lost against uh, my, the gym in the Janema matchup, and it was game three. So uh, I mean, I could have rule sharked him, but I didn't, uh, and I think I should have. Um, there was other instances where I, I also didn't rule shark, and I should have. So uh, just going into the competition, I, I just want to alert you guys that you have really have to know how to play your cards and. Uh, I don't want to be put in a position where I have to roll shark you and uh, and uh, accept the game state where I could have lost. So uh, just remember not to, just to remember to to resolve the cards the way you want them to, and not have me put in a position where I have to uh, roll shark you. And I don't I really don't want to roll shark anybody. It makes me feel bad and it makes the whole matchup awkward. Um, anyways, so uh, round two, uh, I played against uh, I think I played against Toa. Yeah, I played against Toa. And uh, like I said before, Toa, I resolved this and then I won. I think it was a 2 0. Yeah, it was a 2 0. Yeah, it was a 2 0 victory. Um, and then round three, I played against uh, Pan. Uh, and like I said before, the, the, the fact that you can familiar bonds the, um, the uh, Digging Deep Vegeta um, simultaneously turn after turn was the main factor of why I lost. Uh, they also played Saiyan Combo too, which is pretty. Uh, obnoxious, but yeah, I got 2-0'd by that deck, and I was uh, I didn't want to. Yeah, it was a really good deck. Um, I, so I thought, and then he didn't do so well at the, for the rest of the Swiss. Yeah, um, and he also resolved Chain Attack Zeno against me uh, almost every game. Actually, both games. So that was also devastating too. Uh, round four, I played against another Janemba, I think. No, I played Janemba later. I played against another Toa. But this, uh, so th I think, uh, yeah, Toa, Toa is one of those decks where you really have to know what you're doing at every moment. And I think I felt my opponent really didn't know what he was doing uh, with Toa because he would tap out all his energy against me and he left me with, I mean, he, he left himself susceptible to a triple attack. So uh, I felt like that was a really easy victory. Uh, however, there was there was game there was game two where I <laughs> I tried to be cute and I played the the, the Kaba and I gave a triple attack for no reason and then I lost because because of myself. Uh, so that was a two one win. And then uh, next round I played against oh it was the uh, Shinra match. So this this matchup is where I decided to roll shark somebody. Um, so some guy brought up uh, at all cost Vegeta against me and I had Weiss the resting attendant. Uh, on the board, and he ha only had four energy, so uh, he brought out at all cost, and then he he untapped his energy as usual, and at four energy he took two life, and uh, he added the two cards to his hand. He shuffles it, and then uh, he says, "Oh, uh, KO your Weiss," and I I reminded him, "No, you can't KO my Weiss because you're only at four energy. You need to be at five to KO something." Uh, so then he, he takes two random cards, I don't even know, puts it back to his life, like this, and then I say, uh, you can't do that, you've already activated Vegeta and added it to your hand, and I don't even know what cards you added to your hand. 
and then he tells me that he didn't let go of the card and at that point i already know that this guy was trying to gain an unfair advantage uh to me so i i of course i hesitated and then i called the judge really loudly the judge comes over and he rules in my favor uh he says there's nothing that that's stopping you from activating the skill of Vegeta. And then I never really said that he <coughs> shuffled his hand, uh, but I would have had a stronger case had he, I said that. But, you know, I didn't have to worry. But yeah, he did. He did add it to his hand, and then he did that. And now he had six energy, and the next turn I did resolve a um, Goku and Uub, and then I killed him. Uh, then game two came around, and I, I played um, I played Dende. I, I resolved Dende four times against him, and that's how I was able to win. So yeah, just uh, it was an unpleasant experience, uh, just having to rule strike somebody and then having the whole match be awkward. So I just really don't want that to happen ever again. So just just know that you know this is not something I like doing. Uh, so after that, I played against what was that round five? So round six, the final round, I played against Janemba, and uh, I thought there was going to be like more rounds after that. But um, yeah, so that Janemba player, I think it was a two-one victory, uh, just because uh, game one, I I looked at his hand. And I, I took out his negates, but I, I left him with the Bojack, the the one that comes in, the arrival Bojack. And I let him resolve it, and he rested my Goku and Oob, and I was unable to win. Uh, so that was really dumb of me. But game two and three, I did secure the win. Uh, and game three, I don't think I should have won, but he did misplay big time. I did bring out all cost Vegeta, and he had eight life, and I didn't even give it crit, and he was tapped out. And uh, I believe he could have comboed on my second attack to get the five cards in the drop area so he can use D magic to untap energy on my third attack. But he didn't combo and he took the damage from uh, five to two. Sorry, yeah, it was from five to two without comboing. And then I attacked again and then I won. So I stole that game uh, even though I shouldn't have. So yeah, that was, uh, that was a steal. Uh, yeah, so after the, the standings, I got 38th place. I was in 32nd place, only because my tiebreakers were just so horrid that I didn't make top 32. But everybody else, mostly everybody else with 12 points did. So that was my um, my experience. I did, however, get the invite to national, so uh, I do want to go. Uh, I just have to find the time and the money to go. So yeah, that was my deck profile. Hope you guys